It's a historic first, looking to the future and worthy of space. So 85% of the rocket uh, by mass that's sitting on the pad right now is 3D printed. That's a, you know, the rocket prior to this with the highest percentage was probably, I don't know, maybe 4% 3D printed by mass. So it's a huge step change. And, you know, as, as such, we need to prove that a 3D printed rocket can survive the environments of a rocket's flight. The company says its 3D version is cheaper and quicker to produce than conventional rockets. 33 and a half meters long and nearly two and a half meters wide, the rocket has arrived at the launch pad in Florida's Cape Canaveral. The mission has been named Good Luck, Have Fun, and essentially will test whether the 3D printed rocket can reach and survive orbit, a global first. So far, everything's looking great. The, the team has, you know, has gone through the, the major reviews that they need to as we, as we head into launch. The, uh, the weather outlook is, is looking quite positive. If successful, it could in future provide a launch vehicle for commercial satellites. The much anticipated liftoff will take place on Wednesday at 1800 GMT. That's 1 p.m. Florida time, potentially marking a new era in 3D printing and space travel. Stephanie Decker, Al Jazeera. Well, let's get more on this. Joining us live from Melbourne, Florida is Donald Platt, an associate professor of space systems at the Florida Institute of Technology. Very good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. So space economy right now seems to be all about how much, how fast, how cheaply a company can deliver useful things to orbit. Which of those three is best served by 3D printing? Well, I think that fast is definitely something that a 3D printing printed system can provide. Uh, it can do a very flexible uh, new design of a rocket. It can put all sorts of payloads into orbit and do so relatively quickly as well. It's, uh, it's a great game changer, really, to uh, launch so many satellites that people are yeah. interested in putting into space now, literally thousands um, per year, really, in the, in the coming years. Yeah, and we are seeing more and more satellites going into space. The payload uh, right now would carry these satellites into space, but it doesn't compare to what SpaceX, what a SpaceX rocket can um, take into space, though, does it? Can do you see um, it improving in that regard? Sure. This is a pathfinder. This is the very first rocket that's 3D printed that is going to be able to even reach orbit. Um, so we have to start fairly small and move up from there. But uh, demonstrating the technology is really a critical first step as we move forward uh, to larger rockets that are 3D printed in the future. And what next after that? Do you, do you think, you know, 3D printing of space equipment, is that something that could possibly be done in space? Is that part of the vision, do you think? Absolutely. That's a really exciting element of 3D printing and more generally what is called additive manufacturing, where you take a raw material and you kind of spin it into a final product. Imagine going to Mars, for instance, and using Martian soil to create your habitat or, or a rocket system that can get you back from Mars and not have to take everything with you and to be able to sort of live off the land. I think that's a great future step for uh, this type of technology. That is one of the, the aims of Relativity Space, isn't it? Absolutely. And in fact, that's why they have chosen the rocket propellants that they have, because you can make those rocket propellants with the atmosphere of Mars. Uh, so this is a very important first step in that area of uh, what's called in situ manufacturing or, or basically living off the land. As I say, this is a, a, a tremendous game changer. And no doubt you will be watching that launch uh, very closely. Thank you for your time on this. That is Donald Platt joining us live from Melbourne, Florida. Thank you. Thank you.